The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where wealth technology is simplified. With Australia's number one platform for overall satisfaction and value, you don't need to imagine. NetWealth is continually investing in new tools and platform features to optimize your staff productivity and to give you and your clients the best user experience. With our managed accounts functionality, bring new efficiency and scale to your investment operations. A world of technology awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Rated by Investment Trends number one for overall satisfaction by users from 2014 to 2022. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking a hybrid customer-centric approach to financial planning and financial wellbeing with Lucy Winship at Wealth Maximizer. So Lucy is the head of strategic ventures at Noble Oak, in which Wealth Maximizer is one of their initiatives a digital advice platform combining technology with individual wealth coaching. It went live in April this year, starting with advice that's based on a 12-month action plan that's accessible, actionable, and personalized for customers. It's currently focused on types of products and strategies to achieve goals, but as Lucy explains, they're now looking to introduce product-specific recommendations into the offering. The tech is impressive, but what's really special is the problem they're solving in that it's designed for consumers that are struggling to work out what to do with their financial life. They find it overwhelming, don't know where to start, or what really is that first step they should be taking. It's incredibly cost-effective, and it also addresses the consumer perception that advice is only for those with significant funds to invest. Now, you might pick up during this episode that that this is not tech that you can roll out into your practice right now, but Noble Oak, through the Wealth Maximizer Initiative, are ready to partner with advisors and licensees. So whether that's becoming a licensed wealth coach or broader platform partnerships. But at a bare minimum, I would encourage you to check out the tech as there's some incredible examples of the questions we should be asking clients or prospective clients, as well as how it flows and how we should just approach new client onboarding and fact finding in general. I started by asking Lucy what the oldest piece of tech she still owns is and whether she still uses it. Yeah, uh, this is an interesting question. So I moved to Australia about two years ago. So I basically got did a big purge of all my things in the UK. Right. So I actually think my oldest thing is a, I have a little MIDI keyboard that I use oh, yeah. for music production. Um, so yeah, I, I can program that with different instruments and make songs using it. And that's probably the oldest thing I brought. So I made the journey to Australia. Oh, cool. Jeez. Is that a carry on edition or was that it goes straight <laughs> yeah. into the check in luggage? Yeah, it's only like an octave and a half. So oh, nice. You have to kind of turn up an octave to get full range. <laughs> yeah, very cool. No, that's pretty um, – that's a yeah, very unique answer and, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. And I guess are there – if we're moving into – I guess AI is being used for music. I don't know if it's probably a bit questionable, yeah. but is there maybe one yeah. or two ways that you're using it? So AI either personally or in your work life? Yes. Um, I'm not, not using AI in music yet. I'm still going kind of old school for now. Um, but personally, I use AI a lot to do trip planning. So okay. anytime I fancy go away somewhere, make me an itinerary. It's not very good at it, but it, yeah, it's good, it's good as an inspiration base. Yeah, nice. Um, and then professionally, we are we're doing a lot of investigations into AI at the moment, um, and doing a lot of proof of concepts with them. Um, 
but I probably won't go into that too much until we explain a bit cool. more about what I mean. Yeah. No worries. No, that sounds that sounds exciting. And I was going to say, if you've been in Australia for two years, are you planning like domestic trips, or are you going like New Zealand? Like, what does that sort of look like? Mm, well, I've actually been travelling a lot internationally. We've got a wedding in Brazil in a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Awesome. Yeah. Nice one. So I guess thank you for sharing that. Before we yeah, jump into Wealth Maximizer, I'd love for you to give us an overview of your, I guess, professional origin story. Got a little clue there with the, obviously been in Australia for just two years now. So yeah, professional origin story and how you've ended up where you are today. Sure thing. Um, so I originally started as a tech consultant, for KPMG in London, um, and then found that super interesting, learned how to kind of build apps, did a lot of kind of big enterprise um, software implementations, things like that, and then moved over into proposition and product design consulting at Deloitte for a bit before moving into kind of strategy at Deloitte as well. And my whole career plan has basically been learn to build an entire business, kind of get the, the full understanding across it all. So that's the kind of what has taken me to where I am today. Um, but I've always been focused on societal challenges like what is the key things that we can really do to have a beneficial impact on you know people living their lives and, and struggling with everyday life um so kind of across that career i've worked on a complete range of things um from kind of decarbonizing corporate fleets to increasing access for vulnerable communities um to have covid testing in the pandemic to a good chunk on financial well-being and trying to bridge the knowledge gap um, that just exists with so many people not really understanding what to do with their finances, put themselves in a bad financial situation. Yeah, so that, that's kind of what's brought me into financial well-being overall. It's a huge problem for the world. Um, I've worked on it with a couple of different organizations in London and Europe and then made the move over to Australia um, and was very fortunate to yeah get, get the position as head of strategic ventures at Noble Oak focusing on our financial well-being and financial advice service. Just awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That is really cool. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's always great where people especially, like you solve a lot of problems in different industries or professions yeah. and then um, a lot of people end up trying to fix, I don't know, financial planning, financial well-being and especially if you're doing it like cross-border as well, I think that's really fascinating to try and see what the similarities are in different countries and Obviously, coming oh into gosh, Australia, where yeah. the, the reg environment is very, um, you know, stringent. Yeah. Obviously, we're we're sort of moving away from that. Um, hopefully, you know, next year, etc. But um, yeah, just the maturity as well, the industry, all that sort of thing. It's that's really fascinating to me, and obviously, very well positioned um, in the role that you are. I think it's so cool. So, I guess moving on to, I guess, wealth maximizer. Do you mind giving us an overview of what it actually is? So, what does it do? You mentioned sort of financial well being there being a big problem. Yeah, yeah, what is it? Who do you help and what's the problem you're solving? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I might start with the problem because I think that's mm -hmm. always the best place to start. Um, so I think most people, and this is definitely true cross-border, um, find financial planning and just working out what they want to do with their financial life to how to make it work for their uh, overall life and their overall goals. They find it super overwhelming. A lot of people just don't know where to start and they don't know – what do I need to do? And what do I need to do right now? And then I think there's that coupled with uh, when people are actually kind of looking at what their options are. Um, I think there is a bit of a perception that financial advice and is is very expensive. And I think that's, you know, a, as a result of a lot of regulation and mm -hmm. challenges that everyone's facing in the market. Um, and then there's also, I think, a bit of a still a, a kind of old school perception that it's not necessarily for me, it's for for have loads to invest as well so um really the problem that we're trying to solve is is for those those people who are find it overwhelming don't know where to start don't think it's for them and just need something that that fits more of their their budget and their expectations so that brings us to wealth maximizer um mm -hmm. and i think before i explain what wealth maximizer is as well i think my background and the key thing we've tried to do when building Wealth Maximizer as well is just be super customer centric. So really start from what is going on with these customers and what do they need. So Wealth Maximizer combines technology with um, individual wealth coaching to make advice accessible, actionable uh, and really personalized for customers. 
And it covers it's a strategic financial planning advice that covers all the building blocks of wealth. So everything from income to savings to budgeting and debt, property to um, stocks to super to state planning, um, just everything that you'd need to think about across your whole kind of financial life. And really, we're we're focusing on giving customers that clear, actionable year long plan so that they can just pick it up afterwards and know what they need to do, know when they need to do it, um, along with the support of act- of wealth coaches who are all qualified financial advisors. The key features that sit behind Wealth Wise Advisor is kind of online goal setting exercise. Um, so when we designed that, we really wanted to make sure that customers were actually prioritizing what will help them achieve the life they want and what will match their values. Um, so we've we've designed that in a way that it makes them trade off goals and think about their short term and their long term. Um, so that's the kind of first part the customers really experience. And we found that customers really like it because it makes them a really question themselves and being have conversations quite often between partners about what they actually want together when they're building a life together, which is interesting. Next key feature um, is there's the online questionnaire, which as they fill that out, that is uh, kind of a lot of the common fact find questions that you normally get with um, getting kind of financial planning advice. But at the end of it, the customers get a free wealth health score, which tells them how they fare against all of those different wealth building blocks. And that we've also found kind of opens customers' eyes and really helps them think about their financial well-being, which is something that is becoming more and more of a question that people have. Like, where do I stand? What do I need to worry about? Where are my gaps? Okay. After that, we then um, basically put all of that information into our advice generation model. And that shoots out three overarching strategies for customers. So that might be super and savings focused or equities focused or property based or one of those uh, and then the, what customers really like about that is that they actually get to choose what their plan will be anchored around um, rather than feeling like it's kind of an advisor saying it's this and this is just what you need to do and then after that the customers have a, a strategy session with a wealth coach where they understand what their financial projection looks like how likely they are to achieve their goals and choose one of those strategies and then the wealth coach really takes them through what their 12-month actual plan is. So what do they actually need to do in the first 90 days, the next 90 days, and so on from there. And I think the other great thing about it is our wealth coaches are super empathetic. They are super non-judgmental. Um, and it's all about really empowering um, the customers to help them understand what they need to do and help them make the right decisions for themselves. It was a bit spiely, but... <laughs> oh, no, it was um, very comprehensive and very opening in terms of I'm just thinking about I don't know where to start to be honest Lucy like in terms of <laughs> um, where to go there but I think what's really resonating at a bare minimum is like the actual actionable steps like goal setting is difficult in itself but then you've taken it one step further to actually trade off on goals which is also really like just goal prioritization like just instead of the analysis paralysis I talk about that a lot from a tech perspective but if you're thinking about you know, what do I actually want to achieve first and then how does that impact the next thing as well? Like it's really, um, it's it's critical. And then also the, the year-long plan makes a lot of sense. Like you're not trying to, like we're trying to take action now. We're not trying to think about what we're going to do in 2040 in the, you know, the comprehensive financial modelling where we're upgrading the car again for the 17th time because that's what we want to do in retirement, for example. Like all that sort of stuff. Like it just feels very... Um, like it is so clear and as you mentioned sort of customer focused and starting with them in mind like I set up an account to go through that process and it feels like it feels very molded for a consumer it's not like hey this is our financial planning you know traditional fact find give me all your details etc like it feels it flows really nicely and yeah it's it's fantastic so congratulations and I think just on that like you've already explained that through your detailed um explanation of what, of what it is and why you've created it but do you think there's any key things that make it different to what else is out there like there's that but and who do you often get compared against if you want to name names or do you think you're pioneering this in at least the Australian market yeah it's a really interesting question I kind of I think of it about the advice market as having a kind of a spectrum 
Um, and it kind of goes from like financial counseling to the, you know, that you're in a really precarious position and you need to do debt consolidation, um, through to like educational content. And that's more often more free or more kind of seven hour based, um, to personalized financial plans. So that what, what do you actually need to do with it? To product recommendations. So actually which products are you going to get and how are you going to put in it? To we execute that for you basically mm-hmm. um and so what we have been looking at is kind of where is the most value that we can add across that kind of the whole value chain and then on top of that there's also the levels of sophistication for the customers too so and i think it's quite a crowded market when you look at it kind of across everyone but actually what we're really focusing in on is is the personal financial personalized financial plan piece for the kind of uh, earlier in their um wealth um, management and, and planning journey. So I don't think, I think a lot of people who think we have some of the like, like more traditional big financial advice players might be our competitor. I actually don't think we are because yep. we are serving kind of different different customers and providing different um, levels of advice. There are a couple that I think are, are playing in the space. Um, but I think what I see as our real key, key differentiators is but I see making it all around their goals and really about their whole life. So we're not ever starting with product. We're not starting with, oh, I, I, I think I want to get a mortgage. It's actually, I want to buy a house and I want to get married. Can I do that at the same time? That action focus piece, I think is really, really important. So we've built a lot of kind of behavioral economics um, into it. So it's about how we give the information to the customers over time so that they feel like they can tick it off and it, it'd be really easy for them to work their way through. Um, and then they always think that kind of the building blocks piece. So really helping customers understand their financial well-being across all of that is, is also something that I think is really different. That's kind of how I see it. No, I love it. And yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, just to reiterate the, the flow of the process. And as you alluded to before as well, like the, I guess, you know, we're talking about there's a there's a section there on like financial behavior and risk analysis, and there's some really great like guided questions in there that I would have never thought to ask in terms of being a retired financial advisor, but also just in a fact find in general. But also, it's really approachable from you know where it it doesn't assume that people are just getting advice or have thought about this for the first time. It actually delves into like where are you at. And there's a great no. question about like tax planning. Like what, there's, I think there was eight eight options there of like, you know, what um, what are you either doing or what have you done in the past? Like it's a really great way of gauging at least financial literacy, but also getting context for that wealth coach to go, are you already doing this? We're actually increasing this. I'm not introducing this as a foreign con- concept sort of thing. So that wealth yeah. coach can get in there and, and help really quickly. And even things like just this really clear section on, you know, last review, like when did you last review your – insurance policies, investment portfolio, your credit rating. There's even one in there about like cybersecurity <laughs> measures. Like you're really combining, mm. um, I don't know, that is well-being in general, isn't it? Like being cyber safe. Yeah, definitely. And and that one is also focused on the kind of wealth protection piece because yep. people don't think of it as something important for your financial future, but it completely is. So Big true. Cast. No, that's, that's great. And I think, I think you're definitely pioneering in this space, especially with that, hybrid approach do you mind if we talk a little bit more about that like do you think like obviously it's a tech and wealth coach combo um do you think it could exist without the wealth coach like can you maybe talk to us about combining that consumer led tech journey and wealth coach combo yeah super interesting um because i also think there are also other people who are going with just the tech led based Mm -hmm. um approach but i think what we're finding with our customers is they they are like nerve being nervous is a big emotion for them and feeling kind of shame as well and those are things so doing the fact find online means that you don't have to feel the initial embarrassment of you know working through your financial situation which you don't necessarily want to talk about yeah but then actually when you get to the advice stage and want to know what you need to do we're finding that the people element is just so important and it's so valuable to our customers so we, I think it will be hybrid indefinitely. Like we completely see those, the, the combination of the two just elevates the advice completely and 
yeah, make sure that we are also giving the right advice to people too. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And I'm just sort of reflecting again on the on the flow. And obviously, this is a podcast, so it's very difficult to maybe visualize the experience. But the wealth coach is definitely positioned. I guess at the end of the the you know the workflow in terms of filling out the fact find and going through your financial situation, your goals, etc. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask, like, how often do you see the wealth coaches maybe called upon just in that goal setting stage? Because we talked about like you know trading off on goals and goal setting, but I don't know. I, I imagine consumers actually just find it difficult to actually set a goal in the first place because they might not know what's actually possible and what they actually should be aiming for. Like there's really good templates in there. Like that's a really great way of alleviating like blank canvas anxiety. But yeah, how often do you see them actually called upon earlier in the process rather than I guess how the flow runs of like now you've done this, it's wealth coach time, baby, sort of thing. Yes, it's a good question. I like the wealth coach time, baby thing. Um, so we actually have it. I think is it, I can't remember exactly as it starts, but it is about 60% of our customers set up a call with a wealth coach before they wow, okay. actually decide to take a plan with us. So we have been running at different points campaigns to let people do the goal setting um, with a coach or um, have like a meet the, meet the wealth coach call as well because I do think it is all about building that trust for a lot, for a lot of people. So it, it, it's kind of a bit of we wanted it to choose your own adventure because some people do just they know what they want. They just want to get on with it. But then other people, it's really important to have that earlier. Mm-hmm. Love it. No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that is a lot more than I thought in terms of – I'm just sort of thinking about the demographic of of who would be using this. And it's, you know, traditionally you're probably your Gen Ys and your Gen Zs, but then, you know, it's that the sort of, um, you know, the – Assuming that you know, hesitant to reach out and speak to a real person, try and do all the tech first and then reach out. But sixty percent is a, a massive uh, percentage. At least it, it surprised me anyway. So it's also credit to our wealth coaches because they're just fabulous. Oh, exactly. so, many, but we love putting people in front of them. Like, yes, <laughs> and, and obviously that should be the focus. Like that is that is really cool, and yeah, that's that is that's awesome. So I guess in terms of. Um, you know, thinking about the role of the the wealth coach, and I know it's difficult when you're providing uh, advice to, you know, whether you make a decision to steer clear of products or recommend actual products. Like, do you mind sort of talking about that um, decision to sort of steer clear from actual product recommendations and and sort of talk about that process? Yeah, yeah, it is really interesting. Um, so when we first started doing our customer testing, when we were designing it. We had quite a strong direction um, that because people had previously felt like they were kind of had had conflicted advice in the past or felt like the advice they'd received might have been just better for the advisors rather than them, we really felt that it was important to make sure that people felt like the advice was the right advice for them and that there was no kind of commission to product basis behind it. Mm-hmm. Since we've launched it, we've actually had mixed bag of feedback from customers Mm -hmm. so some are really strong in that view still and they love that about us and others have been have said you know i actually want to know exactly what i should do product wise now so we are actually developing that um extra layer next as well so um yeah yeah it's been interesting it's been interesting to see how people have responded yeah and i can imagine it, it makes sense to start with um, you know, types of products as the the recommendations or the advice, uh, as well as strategies to begin with. Because one, it's probably a lot easier to to build for with tech, as well as having um, you know from a licensing perspective as well. And then, as you mentioned, like you're going through that natural progression of okay, now this is what our users are telling us. Maybe we need to think about that as an option as well. It yeah makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, and like. I'm just reflecting as well on that experience of going through, like you, you mentioned um, briefly the wealth health score. Do you think that's a really good way to, obviously you mentioned showing someone where they're at, but it's a really great great way of bringing like all their qualitative angst into a score as well. Like it's really hard to quantify someone's wellbeing score if not everything is quantitative, if that makes sense. Yes, 100%. I think there's something so like human about you just love to see yourself getting a, a, a rank or a score. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's, you know, you could tell someone you, you haven't focused on this and this. It's just so easy to wrap your head around of like, oh, I am doing well or oh, I'm not doing well in that area. 
Yeah. So which I think has been really good for customers. What's your the rest of your question? Sorry. I don't know if there, I actually don't know if there was a question in there. I think I was just <laughs> um, laboring on the the wealth health score. But I think the snapshot too is. I think it's really powerful because that's that's quite a good visual. Like someone goes through the process of filling out tables and tables of, um, I'm thinking traditionally, not in this experience, but just filling out line after line of you know financial account. And a lot of people probably haven't seen maybe even their net position before, let alone like a type of financial account consolidated into how much cash do I have. Um, you know, it wouldn't be uncommon for people to have multiple super accounts, all that sort of thing. So that snapshot alone is a really great example of being able to give someone clarity of here is my current position. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. It, it kind of almost originally came from, you know, that with celebrity concept of like, well, what's their net wealth? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you never know yourself what your net position is. Um, so we think it's really nice to offer that to customers. We also as, as you know, you, get, you can see that for free before you have to pay. And we also do that because then we're validating with the customers that, that they've entered everything correctly as well because we do – that's the real moment of going, like, oh, well, yeah, I've completely underestimated my expenses. And we'll That's a great up. point. Yeah. yeah. And it, I noticed too it also prompted you to like, hey, are you sure you want to – want to miss this off in terms of particularly around like um, home loans and, and, you know, property, et cetera, like going, hey, this is – you know, yes, you've answered nothing, but you're sure, pal. So a good little sense check yeah. to go back so they don't get too far down the journey. So really guided and hand-holding there. I guess mentioned mentioned just before there about, you know, when you, when it gets time to for the paywall, et cetera. Now I'm thinking commercially and about probably most of the listeners um, in terms of probably not being consumers of financial advice but more providing it. Like thinking about advisors and I guess licensees, does it work for them? How does it work for them? And is there a way for them to get involved? Yeah, really good question. So when I mentioned that, how we see the market earlier as well, I think there's another point I wanted to make, which is I think we also need to not see ourselves as competition across Mm. that because really we're going for the ASA end goal. Like we just want customers to get the right advice for them. And it also takes a lot to be a provider in this space. So I think there's Number one, a lot of opportunity for partnerships. So I think first and foremost is our, you know, our AFSL holders and providers that have got this base of customers that they might have been old customers or customers that come to them that just can't afford the, the advice that they're providing. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a real opportunity for us to kind of work in collaboration with providers like that to make sure those customers are not just left without advice. Number one. And then number two is we are always looking for more wealth coaches as well. So um, we, yeah, it's it's quite quite a flexible model. So um, we're really are looking for people who really care about getting the advice to those kind of customers. Really empower them, do a lot of the education work, and people who also want to learn more about the power of combining technology with you know financial advice. So if there's anyone I guess listening. We're, yeah, we're definitely always here, happy to hear from advisors that might want to try out something new. Very cool. No, that's that's um, two or three great angles there and, yeah, very exciting. And as you mentioned there in terms of, you know, clients that are either priced out um, or it's just the, you know, the value proposition of that business, I think also – there's so much talk about the next generation of, you know, for example, clients of traditional financial planning firms, their children coming through, or even, you know, their sort of professional network employers as well, I guess. Would that be another angle in terms of um, employee wellness? Yes, definitely. We're having quite a lot of traction in that space. Um, still still early days. We actually only launched a market in April. And only, but yes, we are definitely finding a lot of employers are caring a lot about financial wellbeing. So what's but what's the way to give something that actually makes a lasting difference for their employees, not just, you know, a one-off seminar or hyper, hyper expensive personalized advice? Yeah. Mm. No, very cool. And I imagine if you've got um, sort of wealth coaches coming on and maybe that becomes, I don't know, their own side hustle. I'm just trying to think about how it would work in in reality. Yeah, definitely. Um, so our wealth coaches now, a couple of them do have their own businesses as well, and that's something that we, you know, courage and support because I think there's a lot of people who do want to break out and you know into a new space but then they also still want to be able to provide you know advice and still get a stream of customers for themselves too. 
No, I think it's it's really it's compelling as well. I think in terms of that, probably that side hustle would become the preferred um, role, I guess, because it's it's unheard of to have one piece of tech or one platform involved in the I don't know um, delivery of financial advice. Basically, that whole end to end process is one platform, which makes it so simple for someone to come on and learn the ropes and for both people involved, I guess, clients Absolutely. and advisors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that is also one of our big assets is that we have it's all what we've built and you can the advisors we've also built an advisor portal so the advisors see all the customer data and see all the advice that the model's suggesting and then they review it and make changes as they want to before it goes anywhere too awesome um i guess lucy with clients entering their you know personal sensitive info in a you know comprehensive way, basically, I assume they want that assurance, and and so does everyone involved in terms of where that data is going, etc. But overall, what has been the approach to cybersecurity? Mm, definitely. So, um, as I mentioned, we built the whole platform ourselves, so we are in in charge of all of the kind of data management around it, and we are actually fundamentally first and foremost, we're a life insurance business, so we are. Although I will mention a bit about the life insurance thing in, in a second. But we are very much a risk averse, super on top of risk management business. Um, so it's absolutely part of our core values. Um, so for everything, we are um, meeting APRA CPS 2, 3 and 4, which is the highest standard in data management. I have been told by our head of IT. Um, we've got regular pen testing as well to make sure the system consistently is, you know, there's no vulnerabilities. We've got a risk committee. Information and security committees. We are with constant cybersecurity training. It's completely basically embedded in our approach. It's one of the biggest things that could go wrong and we won't let it go wrong, basically. Awesome. No, very comforting, very um yeah, feeling very good about that. And I think as I mentioned before, there's even a question for consumers on their own cybersecurity. So you you um you know, walk in the talk. It's awesome. And I guess as we sort of close out, um, yeah, thank you so much, Lucy, for your time today. I've really appreciated and enjoyed the discussion. Is there anything you want to add on, I guess, the future of Wealth Maximizer and maybe anything we've missed or what you're working on? Definitely. Um, so I think we touched on a couple of bits on the future. Uh, so the first is, is us exploring the kind of product recommendation piece. So um, that's going to be a super exciting addition for, for our customers if they, if they want to take it up. Um, and then the other piece I mentioned is the so the actionable plan currently they receive that timely points across a year. Uh, okay, yeah. We are in a couple of weeks launching a dashboard for customers. So they will be able to see all of the actions they're supposed to do in this 90 days, literally tick them off and get little like positive reinforcements as yep. they're doing it. Yes, exactly. Um, so we're super excited to have that live because then it's just really about like building this behavior and um, getting them working through their plan too. So lots of exciting things happening. And oh, watch the space. Oh, oh no, I was going to say that as well. We are uh, for people who are who might want to test out Wealth Maximizer after this because you can sign up to the website for free as you've seen Pat and go through the the questionnaire and the goal setting piece. We're also going to be slightly adjusting the, the questionnaire in a couple of weeks as well. So we're just constantly refining and improving it. I thought it was also worth mentioning because, um, so we, just to be clear, Wealth Maximizer is provided by Noble Oak Services. Um, and obviously, Noble Oak Life Insurance is a different product and a different kind of subset of the business. Um, and just to also make it clear, we do not recommend our own life insurance products. Either we have actually completely separated them in the business like Chinese balls left right and centre so I just I think that's always a question that people ask or, or think about and they know Lucy thank you so much for your time thanks so much for having me it was great to chat